Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lecture series for Math 085. This is part two of section 3.5. We're going to review order of operations and then apply order of operations to values that may contain decimals and or fractions. We'll also explore scientific notation. So let's review uh, order of operations. We have this mnemonic device. Maybe we use please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, the P we know stands for parentheses. And that's any type of grouping symbol, whether it's braces or brackets or parentheses or even that special absolute value. If something's in any sort of grouping symbol, we're going to draw our attention to that first. Then the E stands for exponents. We'd move on to exponents. The M and D is multiplication and division. Now, these are equal but reciprocal operations. So we do them from left to right, not necessarily multiplication before division, but we do it from left to right. Addition and subtraction, they are also equal operations of one another, re reciprocal. One will undo the other. We do those from left to right. So we do any grouping symbols. We evaluate any exponents. We multiply or divide from left to right. And then we add or subtract from left to right. So let's look at a real world example. This morning on my way here, I noticed I was almost out of gas. I have a small car. It only has uh, an 11.1 gallon tank. And I filled it up. And it was 10.585 gallons of gas. The cost per gallon today was $3 and 779 thousandths. I don't know why gas station charges us fractions of a penny, but uh, they do. They make, it, make you feel better. Hey, it's less than $3.78. Not really, because they round it up. So we have 3.779 is our cost per gallon. So if I only had $46.19 in my checking account, but I had to get gas in order to make it to work today, I gassed it up. Did I overdraw my account, my account, or do I still have some money in there? Well, let's figure it out. In order to do this, we have to follow order of operations. Well, how much did I pay for gas? Well, in order to determine that, I have a unit value for the gallons, cost per gallon. The unit price of gas is 3.779. And I know how many gallons I purchased. Well, if we multiply the cost times the number of gallons, we'll have the total cost. So multiplication, I have 3.779 times the number of gallons, 10.585. Whatever this total is, I have to subtract it from my checking account because I had to pay for that gas. So this value is going to be subtracted from my checking account. So 46, well, we don't need those units right now, 46.19 minus 3.779 times 10.585. Well, if we follow order of operations, we do multiplication first. So let's do this multiplication. 10.585 times 3.779. Now, the decimals happen to line up. That's not necessary in multiplication. We just Line up the values, because we'll determine where that decimal goes at the end. 9 times 5 is 45. We carry the 4. 9 times 8 is 72, plus the 4. Is 10, carry the 1. And 3 and 1 is 4. Now we have to determine where does that decimal go. That was a lot of multiplication. It can be very tedious, as you can see. Well, I had three digits to the right of this decimal and three digits to the right of that decimal for a total of six digits to the right of the decimal. So I need six digits. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. I need six digits to the right of the decimal. Now, obviously, because this is money, we're dealing with what's in my checking account. This value, we have to round to the nearest penny or the nearest hundredths. Well, we look to the value to the right. We see it's 0, so I can round this off. I paid $40 for gas, and that's because I'm very particular. I've got to get to the even number. So that makes my math a little easier. I have 46.19 minus whatever that value was 
we found that value to be 40. Notice I don't need that decimal because it is a whole value. And 4619 minus 40 is $6.19. So hopefully I can make it to payday, right? All right. Let's look at some other examples of order of operation when maybe we're dealing with decimals or fractions. Now, here I have negative 100 times 2.3 minus 30 times 1 half. Now, multiplication or division has to be done before any addition or subtraction. So I see I have multiplication here and here before I can do that subtraction. Well, 100 times 2.3, well, I know factors of 100, I can just move the decimal, or factors of 10, I can move the decimal to the right. And a negative times a positive is a negative. So it's a negative. 100 times 2.3, move it two zeros, move it two places. So 2.3 becomes 230. Minus, well, I can do 30 times 1 half. That's multiplication, just like this was multiplication. So I'm just doing them left to right. 30 times 1 half, or 1 half of 30, is 15. And now I'm ready to do addition or subtraction. Luckily for me, by multiplying by 100 or taking a half, we eliminated our fraction. We eliminated our decimal just by chance. And now we can look at this and say, well, they're the same sign. I can combine, and I'm going to get negative. 245. Let's look at this example. Here we have a decimal being squared plus 1 and 4 25ths. So we have a mixed number. So first things first, I work within parentheses. Well, this is just a digit or a number. So I can't do anything within those parentheses. So now I'm ready to move on to the exponent. I need to square this value. Well, a negative 0.09. Squared is times itself, a negative 0.09. A negative times a negative is a positive. So I know this value will be positive. So I just have to multiply 0.9 times 0.9, because I've already determined the sign. Well, 9 times 9 is going to be 81. Carry the 8. 9 times 0 is 0, and the 8 is 81. And if I multiply this by 0, I'm just going to get zeros. Now, if we look and say, well, this was multiplication. Now it's time to determine where that decimal goes. I have two digits behind this decimal and two digits behind this decimal. I need four digits behind my decimal. But I only have two. Well, I just have to go 1, 2, 3, 4 in order to have four digits behind the decimal. So 0.0081, or 81 ten thousandths. Now I need to take this value, because I've dealt with that squared. There's no multiplication or division. Now I need to add it to this mixed number. Well, maybe I don't want a mixed number. So I have 4 25ths. Well, maybe I want that as a decimal. Well, to have this as a decimal, maybe I want to know the, uh, to change this to some factor of 10. Well, I know if I multiply 25 by, oh, excuse me, 4, that'll give me 100. And what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I'm really only multiplying this fraction by 1. So I'm going to have 1, my whole value, and 4 times 4 is 16. And 4 times 25 is 100. And if we just read this, 16 one hundredths is 16 in the 100th spot, 1.16. And now I can add these. And if I add these, I just line up their decimals. And this isn't too bad. Put in some placeholders, we get 1, we get 8, we get 6, we get 1, the decimal, and then 1. So well, let me get that out of the way there. 1.1681 is my decimal equivalent to this order of operations that we completed. Now we have negative 3 squared divided by 100. Here's where we have to be very careful. There's no parentheses, so we'd move right to exponents. This exponent only applies to the number, not the sign in front of it, because of adjacencies. If this was in parentheses, then we'd be squaring the negative just like we did here. But that's not the case. So only the 3 is squared. So let's evaluate that. 3 squared is 9. Negative 9 divided by 100. And maybe. If, if you're familiar with the factors of 10, we have 100 here. That's two factors of 10. I'm dividing by that. So you can think of that, well, I would have to move the decimal to the left. So if I move the decimal to the left two spots, I'm going to have 
0.09 or negative 0.09. Or I can think of this as rewriting it as a fraction. Negative 9 is divided by 100. I can leave it just like that. That's the answer in fraction form. Or I could carry it out to a decimal. And if we just move it to the left, negative 0.09 or negative 9 one hundredths. Negative 9 in the 100 spot. All right, let's take a look at scientific notation. Scientific notation is just a way to express either really big numbers or really small numbers. Because when we work with the decimal system, sometimes numbers that are really huge are tedious to even write out. And sometimes numbers that are really small are so small that they too are tedious to write out. So we have a way to write numbers that are either very large or very small by using scientific notation. Now here I have some number a times 10 to the nth power. This is what scientific notation should look like. We have some value, a single integer, a single digit, uh, and it might have a decimal to it, times 10 to some power. And that n represents either a positive or a negative number. Well, when we divided or multiplied by factors of 10, we moved the decimal either to the left or to the right. If we look at this here, this is essentially what scientific notation is telling us. This value tells me how many places to the left or right I can move the decimal. If it's positive, I, it's telling me how far that decimal should be from a. So in this case, if I had a times 10 to the n power, where n would be 4, I would have four zeros, 10 to the fourth power. If a or n is negative, it tells me how far that value of a is from the right of the decimal. So how far is it? Negative values put me to the right of the decimal. So let's look at something that actually has a number. If I have 3 times 10 to the fifth, this is scientific notation. If I write that in standard form, this just says I have 3 times 10 to the fifth, which is 100,000. 3 times 100,000 is 300,000. Or a 3 with five zeros. A 3 with five zeros. What if it was 3 times 10 to the negative fifth? Well, that tells me how many uh, places or factors of 10 I am from the decimal. So this 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places from the decimal, 5 places to the right. So let's look at a real world example, and we'll use our world. <clears throat> Here on Earth, our population is approximately 6.55 billion. Well, a billion, how much is a billion? Well, it's this number right here. This is a billion. So it's a 1 with, uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 zeros. So a billion is the same as 10 to the ninth. So I can rewrite this number in scientific notation because a billion is the same thing as 10 to the ninth. I'm going to write that right here. 10 to the ninth power. So 6.55 times 10 to the ninth power. This is the number in scientific notation. Now, if I'm going to write it in standard notation, just write it out as a number, that 9 tells me I have to move this decimal to the right nine places. So I'd write 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 6.55 billion is the same as 6.55 times 10 to the ninth. And writing the scientific notation isn't so bad. But here, we have 6,550,000,000. Uh, and that's a huge number, right? Lots of zeros I had to write. So 6,550,000,000. Same as 6.55 billion. So be familiar with writing a number in scientific notation or in standard form. And this is how we'd apply it to something very large. Well, on the other end of the scale, maybe we have something that's really small. The width of DNA is 0 0.00000025 meters. Well, we can rewrite this in scientific notation so it's a value that's more manageable than having all these zeros. Well, <clears throat> to have something in proper scientific notation, we have to move the decimal 
to the first non-zero digit. Well, that's this 2. So I have to move it to the right of that. So how many places am I going to move it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So to move it 9 places, 2.5 times 10, well, if I write 9 here, the number of places I moved it, that would be a billion if we saw in this example. 10 to the 9th was a billion. Well, this isn't a billion. It is a billionth. That means it's to the right of our decimal point. We moved it. So 2.5 times 10 to the negative 9th meters. And negative 9, 10 to the negative 9th meters is something called nanometers. So that would be 2.5 nanometers. Just like we said 6.55 billion, the word nanometers is changing this to just 2.5 nanometers. Let me write that in. And I'll write the. These are equivalent. So now 2.5, if I have to do some math, I'm just using units of nanometers. This number is a lot easier to mathematically manipulate than this decimal. All right, <clears throat> this one I'm going to leave for you to do. This is the distance from the sun. Earth is approximately 93 million miles from the sun. I want you to write this out in scientific notation and in standard form.